welcome to The Tonight Show, everyone. I'm Jimmy Fallon, anchoring hour 30 of NBC's election night coverage. Come on, it's 2020. Did you really think last night would end up wrapped up with a neat little bow? Seriously, today felt like waking up with a hangover then realizing you're still at the bar. What time is it? What a long, emotional, and confusing ride this has been. It's, it's like a Matthew McConaughey car commercial that won't end. <laughs> Meanwhile, you think you're stressed. Imagine how President Trump feels. In two months, he's either getting inaugurated or incarcerated. <laughs> it was a crazy night. Here's what most people heard right before they went to bed. Too close to call. 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 Yeah, the one thing we know for sure is no more polls. <laughs> That's it. Done, okay? No more polls. All right, from now on, the only time Americans want to hear about a poll is if they're talking about Santa or, stri or strippers. And that's it. Uh... Yep, today, pollsters saw a different blue wave uh, right as they were slowly walking into the ocean. At this point, I'd rather hear predictions from the guy trying to guess my weight at a carnival. <laughs> pollsters were basically us when we really think we've nailed the parallel park, but then get out of the car and see we're about 14 feet from the curbs. Like, <laughs> honey, look out! You want to scrape the bottom of the do Oh, actually, well, we could fit a Le car between where we parked and where the... I knew you'd have it look good. Yeah. Uh, from now on, when you release a poll, just say both candidates are tied with a margin of error of 100. <laughs> As we speak, some states are still tallying the votes. Somehow, Chuck E. Cheese can count a million tickets on the spot, and we still can't count the votes in three days? <laughs> I can't take the suspense anymore. My stress eating has gone from brownies to ice cream to just pouring raw cake mix down my throat. <laughs> Yep, the race is still too close to call. Apparently, a lot of voters looked at 90,000 COVID cases a day and thought, sure, I can do four more years of this. <laughs> Experts still can't believe the race is this tight. Apparently, people are voting based on which candidate they want to drink bleach with. <laughs> but one of the big stars of the election night was America's sweetheart and MSNBC political correspondent, Steve Kornacki, who is on our show this evening. <laughs> I was working the touch screen map like a magician all night long. He was shown on the Kornacki cam. You see that? MSNBC basically treated him like a panda that was about to give birth. <laughs> Last night was incredibly tense, and you could tell the newscasters were feeling it. Even CNN's graphics guy who does the banner at the bottom of the screen was stressed out. Take, take a look at this. And when Florida's close, it comes down to the I-4 corridor. With a tremendous amount of Democratic vote, are still outstanding at uh, this. You know, that's nearly 30 points there, 28. I'm just, uh, that puts him at 17, 18,000 <laughs> votes. With this wild and different 2020, mail-in voting, in-person early voting, if he saw this and say, it's past midnight, the question is, is that just the early votes or are there more of us? Wayne County. And they are going to count ballots that come in postmarked by election day. The higher was is no longer off the map. Like they oh, like after 2016. And so what I'm trying to do is identify where yeah, specifically in these counties. He's moving to Belgium. He's moving to Belgium. Well, very early this morning, Biden spoke to a drive-in crowd in Wilmington, Delaware, and he told us that we need patience. But I'm not sure it's one of America's strengths. I mean, if a TikTok video isn't fun in the first three seconds, we're like, ah, next. <laughs> yeah, we just have to be patient in a country that literally invented a Domino's tracker so we know exactly when our pizza will arrive. Like, it's in the oven, honey, it's in the oven! <laughs> He's almost here, he's almost here! <laughs> honey, wave to him, make sure he knows it's us. <laughs> Uh, but this is very interesting. Joe Biden actually got more votes than any other candidate in history. Wow. Yeah. So, once again, how is this even close? <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump spoke from the White House early this morning, and he seemed upset that the results weren't immediately called in his favor. Watch this. We were getting ready for a big celebration. Oh, yeah. We, we were winning everything, and all of a sudden, it was just called off. Literally, we were just all set to get outside and just celebrate something that was so beautiful, so good. Oh, that's too bad. I'd hate for the election to get in the way of a good party. <laughs> yeah, Trump also lashed out at the voting process and made a pretty bold claim. Take a look at this. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election 
Frankly, we did win this election. Yeah. If you're keeping track, in the same speech, Trump claimed the election is a fraud and an embarrassment and then declared victory. I don't think we should correct Trump. I'd just nod along, put him in a fake White House, and let him spend the next four years thinking he's in charge. Who cares, right? Well, as you might expect, Trump has been tweeting a lot today, and you could tell he's getting worried, because one of his posts said, they are finding Biden votes all over the place in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan so bad for our country. Dude, they're not finding votes. They're counting them. Because no one wanted to leave the house. Because there's a pandemic. Gosh. Trump's getting close to being like, okay, forget about the votes. Let's measure this thing in retweets. <laughs> oh, and before we go any further, here's some extremely important election news. Voters in New Jersey have passed a constitutional amendment legalizing recreational marijuana. <laughs> That's right. Weed is legal in New Jersey. You, you just know there's already a guy walking around in a tie-dye tracksuit. He's like, excuse me, you guys like, uh, you guys like fish. You like the fish. Like the fish. May wake up with a fish in your bed, a fish. Listen, when you're home to the Jets and Giants, you got to make drugs legal. Ooh. Now that weed is legal, New Yorkers driving into New Jersey are going to go from rolling their windows up to rolling them down. It's like, ah. Uh, and this makes sense. Once Jersey legalized weed, they also voted to put a Wawa on their state flag. <laughs> so far, legalized weed has been a little rough. Every time the mob buries a snitch, they forget where. But if you think legal weed is a big deal, just listen to what Oregon did. Oregon voters passing a measure to decriminalize small amounts of cocaine, heroin, and other drugs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. A small amount of heroin? <laughs> who's only doing a small amount? Sh show of hands, does anyone know someone who casually does heroin? Uh, oh. Just a little bit. I just do it on the weekends. Uh, look, yeah, I do it sometimes when I drink. I do heroin a little bit. <laughs> And finally, earlier today, Gap tried to send a message of unity over Twitter by posting a short video of a red and blue hoodie with the caption, the one thing we know is that together we can move forward. Kind of weird, right? Trying to bring the country together when your name is The Gap.